Well, hello again, everyone. You know, every time I listen to our fearless analysts and director of research, uh, my confidence in how the world is going to work grows. And, you know, listening to our inspiring uh, uh, guests, uh, David Liu, who you just heard, talk about curing disease and, and, and having us control our genetic destiny. That's pretty amazing. Uh, and, and, you know, the tone changes that I hear from people like David and uh, Peter Diamandis about space. And, and then reflecting on uh, Raul Paul about uh, blockchain, just innovation is evolving so quickly, we have to just listen and look at the tone changes uh, that take place from one conversation to the next to understand how rapidly, uh, how rapidly the world is going to change. But Raul said something uh, I thought very important, and it does address uh, an elephant in the room. Um, we know that innovation in the equity markets, the public equity markets, not the private equity markets, has been ravaged in the last year. It's about a year that it has been ravaged. And Raul uh, mentioned that when there is a change in expectations, and last year, as we were getting our vaccinations, uh, the, the thought that the economy would open up and, uh, and interest rates would go up, inflation, would go up, but would uh, be be tamed. Um, during during the year, there was a change. The supply chain issues did not go away, and uh, and so this fear about what inflation and interest rates are going to do has gripped the market. Uh, first, it gripped the innovation space almost exclusively uh, in a puzzling way. Uh, now it seems to be affecting the market a little more broadly. But I will say now that the two year Treasury. And the, and the market itself has priced in at least four interest rate hikes, uh, that this, this possibility is priced in the equity markets too, increasingly. And if anything, oil prices going up uh, are, are an incredibly burdensome tax on, uh, on the lowest socioeconomic uh, uh, demographic sectors in our economy. So I think the, the fears here are going to shift from rising interest rates and, and higher inflation, uh, potentially to recession, especially, and you've heard me on this before, uh, because we see inventories piling up uh, throughout the ecosystem. So innovation stocks in the public equity markets are down, I'm going to say broadly, 50 to 75 percent in the last year. I mean, that is uh, that's as bad as it got during 08, 09. Uh, now, in the private markets, of course, we're seeing one example after another where the pricing is up in the last year. We're seeing up 50 to 100 percent. And I think the uh, private markets do have it. Uh, more, uh, they're, they're more correct in terms of what they should be discounting right now uh, because of what you heard today about uh, research, how, how profound the changes are, how exponential the growth will be, and uh, how the equity market cap is going to explode in these areas. And we really do believe that will be the case. Now, the, these, Besides uh, interest rates and, and inflation, there's been a double whammy in the, uh, in the public equity markets. And I think this is what helps explain what's going on. The move to risk off for many traditional asset managers means get back to your benchmarks. And if you look at the broad-based benchmarks, even the broad-based tech benchmarks or tech-oriented benchmarks, uh, you're going to see that they are short innovation, uh, true innovation. Um, they're mostly in that the innovation that they're capturing is mostly in the mega cap tech stocks. They become a disproportionate weight in, in many indices. And I would uh, submit in many assets, I mean, portfolios in the tra traditional asset management world. Uh, this move to benchmark style investing, uh, we believe has um, 
has been turbocharged during the last 20 years uh, by the tech and telecom bust first, and then the 08, 09 meltdown. And the risk aversion in the markets is palpable. Uh, and so uh, going back to benchmarks or uh, repositioning portfolios so that they are closer to their benchmarks seems to be what has been going on. What, it, what happens uh, then? Well, they're selling the real innovation uh, stocks out there, uh, the emerging innovation stocks and those that are going to create the uh, uh, outcomes uh, that, that um, we showed you in our research today. Um, traditional uh, research is becoming very benchmark sensitive as well. It's not just the portfolio managers, it's their analysts. And, they're be and they have also become very short term in their time horizons. There are two other um, there are characterizations of traditional research out there uh, that ARC has uh, actually uh, tried to capitalize on in terms of inefficiencies in the marketplace. Uh, the coverage uh, uh, in the traditional asset management world of analysts is broken down primarily by sector or industry or sub-industry. Uh, very specialized, very narrow, and as I mentioned before, typically very short term. Uh, and because of the siloization, uh, their ability to understand the convergences that are taking place between and among uh, the 14 technologies that, uh, uh, that we touched on today, uh, they're, they're not able to see them as clearly as we are. We are looking for them. And so the way we've set up our research ARC is benchmark agnostic and long-term in its time horizon. Our investment time horizon is five years. And therefore, our analyst responsibilities uh, are set up in a way to encourage uh, uh, the collaboration uh, and, and explore the convergences uh, between and among these technologies. Their responsibilities are set up by technology, very, very different uh, from the traditional asset management world, uh, because we believe each of these technologies is going to cut across economic sectors. So they are specialists and they are, are domain experts in, in these technologies. And they're generalists when it comes to sectors, because these technologies are going to uh, fall in price and uh, therefore access will open up to many more sectors uh, in many ways going mass market. Uh, so uh, I'd like to talk a little bit uh, uh, besides that about the differentiation. We have, as I mentioned before, uh, Brett Winton, our director of research, MIT engineer, uh, educator, uh, um, as, uh, an entrepreneur, and uh, a financial analyst uh, for years. Uh, we have uh, our analysts, the domain experts. Uh, the co collaboration that you see is, is uh, visible, and it was today on this seminar, uh, when you listen to William uh, talk about artificial intelligence, and then you hear uh, our genomics analysts, uh, uh, so uh, Simon and Ali and Pierce as well, uh, Sam and Tasha in the autonomous world, uh, uh, Sam again in the space world. Artificial intelligence is the glue uh, that is pulling these technologies together and, and, and um, giving us a lot uh, to collaborate on as analysts and, uh, and portfolio managers. Uh, our, our research is centered on rights law. That's another thing that you're not seeing in the traditional asset management world. The only way to truly size these opportunities is to understand how uh, quickly the costs are going to fall and uh, what will be the price, uh, uh, elicit, the price elicit, uh, elasticity of demand. Um, so uh, innovation solves problems. And you heard uh, about a lot of the breakthroughs that are going to solve problems. We saw it last year with COVID. In the last two years, COVID, uh, innovation solved problems. We had tests and vaccines that no one dreamed we would have in the short time period that we, we, we got them. 
and it was all because of innovation. Uh, now we have supply chain issues, we have labor shortages, uh, we have the cost of capital going up, and uh, we have automation of all kinds, and we have DeFi. Um, and so we really do believe that uh, the, the, the innovation in, in, that we are researching is a wonderful complement to uh, the traditional asset management oriented portfolios, the traditional growth and value portfolios that are benchmark sensitive. Uh, because if we're right, there is going to be a lot of creative destruction in the traditional world order that is represented by the more traditional benchmarks. Uh, and, and if it, that is right, then um, a hedge uh, with innovation strategies is, is not only appropriate, but uh, we think will be necessary. And I do want to talk a little bit about volatility here. Um, volatility is, uh, has, has become the watchword. And as Brett said in his opening remarks, many people associate volatility with risk. Volatility is more uh, associated with uncertainty. And when time horizons collapse, as they have within the last year, uh, then the volatility does increase. We use volatility uh, to our advantage. We concentrate towards our highest conviction names, and, um, and that tends to work out very well uh, as, um, as we go through these corrections. I will say, as we go through these corrections, uh, and, and in terms of the way uh, we are being covered in the, in the market, uh, you know, there, is, there are some unfortunate instances where, uh, where journalists are using, um, are using endpoint sensitivities uh, and they're kind of random, the time periods they're using, uh, and uh, really quite unfair. Uh, but... I guess I'll close uh, by this section by saying, you know, inflation and in interest rate risks seem to be uh, priced in uh, when you've had this kind of a correction, and and the and the broader market has has joined in as well. Um, we um, we do believe that innovation is on sale, and. Uh, and we do believe that it will be really important for investors to get to move toward the right side of change, given the amount of disruption that we do expect and that I hope our research today telegraphed to you. It's also very important to keep that five year investment time horizon. The, the difference between linear growth and exponential growth when you're talking about a five year period is enormous and because Wright's law gets us to uh i think to the right answer in terms of the exponential growth trajectories the surprises are going to be enormous and most important uh we like to say as we're focusing on the five years keep your eye on the prize we realize it's been a very difficult market uh, we also do believe and our conviction this past year actually has increased that these exponential growth trajectories uh, have been accelerated by COVID and even more so now by the turmoil we're seeing in the labor markets, logistics, and in the financial markets.